Hi dear students, my name is Bal Subramaniam. Dear students, are you ready for the tomorrow coming exam, particularly financial management and strategic management? Dear students, are you ready for the tomorrow exam means then here it is my day before strategy. Dear students, before going to watch this video, please come out from the yesterday's exam mood. So how you wrote that exam and whether it is a well and worst, keep it everything. That is Gatam Gadha Chordu and concentrate on this video and I am going to share some valuable tips not only for the exam but also examination hall. So with this strategy you can attempt tomorrow exam in a confident mode right it is my confidence yes watch this video till to the end and make a needful points and follow my strategy you can do the better way yeah coming to tomorrow with respect to financial management my strategy is this dear students financial management if you observe in the entire question paper, the weightage is very, very important. There are certain chapters playing very, very dominant role. Number one is working capital management and capital budgeting and the tools for financial analysis. This chapter's weightage is very, very important. That's the reason I have taken some most important elements here, the financial management, particularly investment issue. Investment issue, this is a capital budgeting. What it conveys? It is guides that how to invest in a fixed asset or long term project. In order to make an evaluation, there are different types of methods covered in this chapter. Particularly what the most important methods means NPV. In the NPV is a very, very important segment, dear students. So concentrate in NPV calculation treatment of working capital, understand the treatment of subsidy and identify when tax is given, how to calculate depreciation. When tax is not given, how to find it out depreciation, variable cost ratio, contribution ratio. If at all you will get the loss, right, you may get the tax shield. But sometimes instead of getting a tax shield, you would be given set of losses. Set of loss. So what is a set of loss? You, you analyze all these concepts. And at the same time, when you calculate the operating cash flow every year, uh, multiple unequal cash flow will form. In such a case, you have to use the present value factor. When every year operating cash flow is the same, then you have to follow present value annuity factor. But in the middle of the year, same cash flow may generate over the period. In such a case, sum it up all the present value factors and find it out annuity for the middle of the year. So these are the certain core important points covered in various problems of NPV in CMA material. You better to look all this concept, right? And uh, another important method is a profitability index. Profitability index, once you know the NPV, then no doubt at all, they will ask you profitability index where PV of cash inflow minus PV of cash outflow is the NPV. PV of cash inflow divided by PV of cash outflow would be profitability index. In profitability index, don't forget the capital rationing when you are doing divisible project and indivisible projects. For divisible projects, you have to follow profitability index and make a ranking. Basing on ranking, you have to make allocation. For uh, uh, individual projects take NPV and choose a combination basing on NPV, you have to allocate your funds. And uh, thereafter, you have an internal rate of return. Internal rate of return is the maximum rate of return one can generate from the given project. Mm -hmm. You know, IRR can be calculated by using four pattern of cash inflow. Single cash inflow, multiple unequal cash inflow, multiple equal cash inflow and uh, infinite equal cash inflows. So for the, all the cash inflow, you calculate IRR, you, we learned, right? You, you keep eye on this. Another one is a discounted payback period. When modern techniques is asked, NPV, profitability index, internal rate of return, there is a much chance to ask a comprehensive problem. In the comprehensive problem, they may cover what is the profitability internal rate of discounted payback period. Then don't forget to analyze payback period. It is a time period required to recover your investment and accounting rate of return. Payback period when cash inflows are equal, unequal in such a case, how do we do? And accounting rate of return. When uh, average investment based, total investment based, how you have to do, that's an important. Thereafter, working capital. Working capital is very, very important chapter D students. In working capital, you have eight steps. First of all, you have to analyze what are the inventory norms. Thereafter, you identify the cost structure. They have to, how to learn estimation, individual current assets, individual current liability, then preparation of statement of working capital, yes or no? And thereafter, you have to take a decision. If at all need, any urgent uh, additional assumptions are there you have to complete because in working capital assumptions are part of your answer right in working capital you can find the two models one is a working capital estimation for existing company 
working capital estimation for new company in new company don't forget the treatment of credit purchases thereafter you have operating cycle it is a time period in which in it, it in which raw materials are converted into cash this cycle also called cash cycle with the, in this model they will ask you how to calculate net operating cycle period they may expect from how to calculate number of cash cycles they may expect from how to calculate working capital base up you concentrate and debtors management debtors management is one of the important area in uh, working capital management where they will you can expect the questions from first time offering credit period is a worthable to offer a credit period to the client particularly you are going to evaluate the credit policy of the company thereafter extending credit period so already credit period the company wants to extend 2 months to 3 months 3 months to 4 months 4 months to 5 months like that such a models are there you concentrate that one that plays very very important dear students so this is with respect to working capital the next one is a cost of capital very very important chapter the cost kd kr please go with the, all the specific cost estimation thereafter estimation of weighted average cost basing on values if they will ask you book value they will ask you number of securities into book price market value they will ask you number of securities into market price and they will ask you marginal cost of capital when you are going to raise additional funds particularly at the debt right you have you should consider risk element with respect to ke when additional funds are raised by debt what would be the risk element of equity shareholders that is a point you have to keep in mind so this is the way marginal cost of capital also you have to go clearly what is the steps and procedure and coming to capital structure entire the chapter you can see the two categories one is analysis another one is approaches so ebit eps analysis where we start to ebit from eps you try to understand what about the interest slab rates interest calculation is a very very important in ebit eps analysis in ebit market price analysis with support of pe ratio we will calculate the market price then financial break even point indifference point also very very important thereafter approaches is there net income net operating income traditional theory but give much priority for mm theory particularly market value estimation for modiglani and mm theory thereafter leverages leverages is nothing but three types of leverages we will study and we will assess the risk element of the company one is operating leverage financial leverage combined leverage yeah here the if you observe the past exam trend and past exam paper so sometimes they used to give income statement they will ask you leverages and sometimes they will give you leverages they will ask you income statement preparation sometimes they will give you comprehensive model they may ask you in the compre comprehensive model what they will do means they will give you they will ask you leverages and they will ask you additional points like asset turnover ratio whether the financial leverage is favorable or not return on investment return on capital employed so all the points they may ask you from uh, leverage chapter right thereafter dividend decision so dividend decision one of the important financial decision is nothing but whether to give dividend or not to give dividend particularly in the dividend decision go with the walter model and a gordon model and finally mm theory but comparing to mm theory walter and gordon plays very very important okay these are the important thereafter tools of analysis you have ratio analysis so where ratio analysis would be you have to read the multiple ratios basing on you have to construct or design balance sheet that is an important so and that is the first one they will give you uh, some some income statement basing on that they will ask you the ratios liquidity to check profitability yes, solvency whether the company is effectively working or not operating efficiency like that they have to provide you some income statement and they will ask you multiple ratios sometimes with with support of ratios they will ask you to construct the balance sheet you better to check that one and thereafter you have a funds flow analysis and cash flow analysis funds flow analysis cash flow analysis also you give importance but comparing to above said chapters so this weightage is little bit less but keep eye on ratio analysis thereafter comparative statement analysis common size statement analysis trend analysis is there right and finally risk element also all these things comes under this category but you go with this first one first whatever the most important chapters but meanwhile in this ratio in this tools for financial analysis you concentrate ratios as well as funds flow analysis so these are the certain important areas within the given time frame so you can concentrate about said chapters meanwhile dear students brief i would like to tell you one thing is in brief i would like to tell you the build your self confidence don't lose even though time is very very less right instead of thinking that concept this concept discussing with the others right all these things will consume your valuable time 
that's why in brief hold confidence right you are going to write exam tomorrow well have that an attitude and prepare right another important point i will identify this these are the chapters i told you, you know your time is very very less set a plan to read the chapter so capital budgeting within how many minutes what are the most important point i'm going to cover have a set a plan at the same time set an alarm after the given time frame stop the chapters and go with the next chapter so that's why you have to set plan and set alarm within the given time frame otherwise you cannot cover all these things so finally keep your mood happy then only you can write your exam tomorrow in a wonderful way with this the given videos information right all the best jai hind hello all cma students hope all of you are doing great and hoping that all of you are writing your exams well so as you can see the purpose of very brief interaction i'm just going to provide you some inputs with respect to what you have to do a day before exam let's say a strategy with respect to day before exam particularly for bda cma inter business data analytics subject for you yes the scope for this subject obviously it's a small subject that we have among all the subjects but before you hit your exam you have to be careful with respect to certain things so before i talk anything about bda business data analytics there are certain common things that i would like to guide you as you are done with your previous exam the very first thing that i suggest all of you to do is that stop thinking about the exam that you have already written things can't be changed now no matter you have written exceptionally well or you might have written in a worst way in either of the cases no matter whatever the strategy or whatever the presentation that you have did no matter however you have written the exam stop thinking about previous exam stop worrying about your previous exam that you have written second thing kindly don't discuss about your previous exam with your friend like asking or understanding what are the things that you did because let's say if you have committed any mistakes by discussing with your friends if you have understood that you have committed any mistakes then certainly this will down your morale for your next exams so stop thinking about your previous exam whatever you have written don't discuss with anyone so the moment you are done with your exam you have to start you will be thinking about your next exam so you have to start your preparation strategy for your next exam let's say we have to understand in professional courses every exam has its own peculiarities every exam definitely will test different kinds of skill set from you so here what important is to understand the kind of preparation strategy that you have to follow day before exam so these are some common things that you have to keep in your mind like stop thinking about the previous exam not discussing and immediately planning your own strategy for your next exam so what has to be done for bda business data analytics so a day before exam i suggest you not to touch upon any new topics that you haven't studied previously let's say in the entire syllabus that you have you might have or you haven't studied about a particular topic previously let's say you have no confidence that what is the topic is all about you have no subject knowledge about uh, that particular topic then i suggest you not to touch upon any new topics don't touch any new topics whatever the topics that you have previously revised start gaining more confidence about those topics that you have previously learned so don't touch upon new topics revise whatever you have studied carefully and here itself you have to check your 
previous attempts mtps or mqps that will be released by cma mqps and having an eye on the previous attempt examinations also so that you know what sort of questions have been asked pattern of understanding the question so do not leave a chapter for choice rather content of the chapter can be left for choice so whatever the chapters are there four or five chapters that are there in bda don't try to ignore any chapter completely what i strongly believe is that if you can pay little attention bda is going to be one of the scoring area for you particularly uh, in cma inter because in this we don't have much of complicated things everything is related to data analyzing the data understanding the data visualizing the data so suggestion is a little attention will help you to gain good marks you will get direct questions even we don't have a concern that questions will be indirect in nature so luckily any questions that comes for bda will be direct in nature so you have to check the previous attempt examinations the previous attempt question papers you have to check mqps you have to check any rtps that are released by your board you just go through with them also to have an idea it is not that you will study only the questions that are given in the previous attempt and uh, by this time you will be having an idea that uh, so most of the questions will be direct in nature so even we don't have uh, that concern that you have to understand any practical oriented questions so these are some of the things that you have to keep in your mind and one more thing a day before exam it is not that only bda you have to focus on you have a counterpart subject for this so you have to even revise that thing also so categorically try to divide your time so for this you will be only it is for uh, 30% rest of the 70% you have the other subject to deal with so uh, like accordingly allocate your time so more time you have to give for the 70% one and the remaining time you have to spend for bda even in this video also not touching upon any new areas do not leave any chapter for choice rather content of the chapter can be left for choice as we don't have a problem of asking any practical oriented question most of the questions will be direct in nature so by checking with the previous mqps and question papers you will have an idea that how previous direct questions have been asked these things you have to keep in your mind revising the easy topics as much as possible will help you to easily attempt whatever the three or four questions that come from bda hardly you will be getting three or four questions from business data analytics so a little attention will definitely help you out direct questions are there and only three or four questions will be asked so definitely this is going to help you a lot to get some good marks so keep this small inputs that i have given for you in your mind before you are going to hit your examination so let us not consider important or unimportant in bda rather touch upon major topics in each and every chapter don't leave any chapter for choice so hoping that whatever the inputs that i have given will be helping you to go ahead with your preparation so accordingly plan don't waste your time so follow a planned strategy to give your best good luck for your examinations thank you